Hello and welcome back to Asia Now. My name is Alex and in this video, not a very good day for Canadians in Asia as a Canadian man gets arrested in the Philippines for having a fake visa, another Canadian man brutally attacked in Thailand, a fetus found at Naya International Airport in the bathroom, President Marcos rejects calls to halt jeepney modernization, plus much more starting with their exchange rate, 1 USD right now still under 58 pesos equaling 57.91. Let's jump into our main story. The Bureau of Immigration arrested a Canadian man, Nelson John Amos, at Clark International Airport for attempting to leave for Hong Kong with a fake Philippines visa. Amos, 64, was detained pending deportation proceedings after the BI officer discovered his ACR I-card was not recognized in their system and was actually registered to a Korean man. Amos admitted to buying the fake documents from a fixer for 40,000 pesos but claimed he was unaware that they were counterfeit. Immigration Commissioner Norman warned foreigners against using fixers and advised them to transact directly with the Bureau of Immigration Office. I don't understand like what's going on with some tourists and foreigners and expats. If you have nothing to hide, if you're not a criminal, why are you using fake documents? It's simple. You simply go to any immigration office. It literally takes like 20 minutes if there's like not many people ahead of you. You fill out half a page and you get proper documentation. Do it online if you don't want to visit these nearby places. And also don't ever use fixers. First of all, they don't do anything that you can't do. I understand some people are older. Some people don't have like much. They're not tech savvy or don't understand. But simply ask friends, family. Visit the BI. They're super friendly. Actually, I have to admit that one in Lapu Lapu at Gaisano Mall. Cebu City. That immigration office is the best I've seen in any country. I've traveled to dozens of places and some of the most friendliest, kindest, not just to me, to anybody. Check out their ratings. You'll be surprised how high it is for immigration. Anyways, let's get on to our next story. In Pattaya, Thailand, a Canadian national, Mark Robert Westendorf, 65 years old, was brutally attacked by men dressed as bouncers in Soy 6 on July 31st. Westendorf, a former oil company manager, is now in critical condition in a private hospital in the ICU. His wife is seeking justice. The attack reportedly began after Westendorf leaned against a vehicle, leading to an argument and severe head injury when one of the bouncers struck him. This incident highlights safety concerns in Pattaya Entertainment Zone. If you don't know Pattaya, it's got one of the world's largest red light districts. It's full of bars. And so a lot of things to uncover here. One thing I read about is that the CCTV footage showed that the bouncer didn't actually strike the guy. He pushed him and apparently he came at the bouncer twice and a second time where the man pushed him. I'm not trying to pass blame, but anytime there's alcohol involved, anytime you're around bouncers, they're looking for an excuse to kick ass. It's not right, but uh, no blame. And I hope this guy actually comes through, makes it through the ICU. But just to keep in mind, sometimes you're in a foreign country and people don't always behave the way you expect them to. And yeah, I get, I get this guy... Um, apparently he was trying to break into a car, but it was said that he was just leaning against it. Regardless, an argument happened and a physical altercation took place, and I hope he really makes it out of the ICU. Staying in Thailand a couple days ago, I covered a British man going missing right before he gets to the airport. Here's an update on that story. Missing British man to Bangkok airport boarded flight to Finland. The baffling disappearance of a British tourist hours before his flight from Bangkok has taken a twist. His sister insists he did board a plane. Sarah Robinson Dale revealed that her brother, 27-year-old Simon Robinson, boarded a flight to Helsinki, Finland. Initially, Robinson was feared to have vanished in Bangkok, leaving his family distraught and believing he never boarded his July 26th flight home, despite his phone pinning near the airport minutes before departure. Sorry for the voiceover, guys, but I first thought that this man was found and physically present with his family. However, there has been some conflicting information People are saying he boarded the flight to Finland, but there's no visual of him as the UK government says he did not. So now we have contradicting stories. We have to wait and see to we have physical confirmation of his whereabouts. Next up, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. reaffirmed his commitment to the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program, dismissing the Senate calls to suspend it. In an interview, Marcos argued that the program, delayed seven times, should proceed as 80% of the public utility vehicles have consolidated. On July 31st, 22 senators signed a resolution urging a temporary suspension, citing insufficient driver education and financial burdens of modern jeepneys costing 2.4 million transport groups piston and Manbella have contested the program claiming it's threatening the livelihoods of 140,000 drivers and operators but the Supreme Court has not halted its implementation okay so we have some other additional information uh, yeah, eight times it's been halted I think I said eight times it's been delayed 
stuff like this, I guess we just gotta push through, man. I know it's difficult for a lot of people, but it does need to be modernized. It really has a large effect on uh, not just the environment, but the people are breathing. And just, it's one of those natural steps into progressing as any country. Once again, I don't really have much to say about it because it doesn't affect me directly, but I understand both sides really, but I think I'm slightly leaning towards the modernization part. And then on August 6th, a human fetus was estimated to be one month old was discovered in a garbage can in a woman's restroom in Nino Akiju International Airport, Naya Terminal 1. A cleaning staff member found the fetus wrapped in blood-soaked tissue paper during routine garbage collection. This airport police and medical team confirmed the discovery. The remains were transported to Naya Police Station 1 and a forensic investigation has begun. A joint investigation by Naya Police Station and Airport Department uh, is underway to identify the mother. A similar incident occurred at the same terminal in December 2004 a very disturbing story sorry I should have said disclaimer I'm gonna put that in the edit but so what is going on here if it's the second time happening I'm very curious why the airport that seems like an odd place I, I wonder if it's the staff uh, or somebody coming strictly to the airport to do this uh, if someone could maybe shed some light on this for me am I missing something why is the airport a prime location for this is it because a lot of international travelers are trying to be like discreet? Yeah, maybe please leave your comments down below. Is there an obvious thing I'm missing here? Next up, Manila ranked 93rd out of 100 cities in the Sustainable Cities Index in 2024 by Arcadis, which assesses cities based on environmental, social, economic, and development sustainability. Manila scored highest in environmental category planet, but ranked low in social equity, people, business environment, profit, and sustainable progress, progress indicating significant challenges. The top three cities were Amsterdam, uh, Rotterdam, and Copenhagen. Manila was among the lower ranked cities with Kolkata, Bogota, and Cairo, Lagos, Kinshasa, Cape Town, Nairobi, Johannesburg, and Karachi. So not good. 93rd out of 100. I wonder, I think a lot of that probably has to do with just the number of people, sheer number of people in Manila, the fact that it's still a developing country, not country city, and uh, modernization, I guess that's why I ranked the best because they are trying to at least improve that part of it, linking it back to the whole jeepney thing. Going back to Thailand, just yesterday or the day before, I covered a story of a Japanese family losing somebody for the past four years, now an update on that. A Japanese man was found not alive in Chiang Mai after four years of missing. The missing Japanese man who lost contact with his mother for four years reportedly passed away from an illness last year at a house in the northern province of Chiang Mai, his body at a hospital in the province. The Japanese woman, 66-year-old Yoshimi Nishi, arrived in Thailand on Monday, August 5th to search for her missing son, 39-year-old uh, Takahiro Nishi. Uh, Yoshimi disclosed that her son last contacted her in June 2020. Then on June 9th, Yoshimi received an email from another person claiming her son was ill and needed 1 million yen or about 240,000 baht for the treatment. Another email was sent requesting an additional 300,000 yen, but she became suspicious and did not send the money. Police investigated uh, Takahiro's criminal history and discovered that he and his business partner, uh, Takami, were arrested for embezzling in 2020. They were later bailed out for 100,000 baht each, and Takahiro subsequently disappeared. Okay, so I smell some foul play, although I don't have any evidence just what I feel. I think like there's more to the story than just somebody getting ill and passing away. Usually you contact your loved ones if you're in that situation, especially if you're looking for money to get better. Therefore, you probably have a means of still communicating. But then again, speculation, right? Speaking of Thailand, I'm just going to read you guys some headlines because Thailand, if you guys think Manila and Philippines is bad because somebody's saying you always cover bad stories, trust me, you don't want me diving into Thai news. Thailand is becoming, not becoming, it's always been happening, but I think uh, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Here are the headlines. Phuket Airport grounded as power cuts leaves flights in the dark. Thailand Parliament rejects adult content legislation for toys. A massage therapist assaulted and robbed in Pattaya. Fake cop caught with pants down and ding dong out on social media. Thailand cracks down on counterfeit engine parts and shampoos. In some maybe positive news, a monk donates entire 18 million baht lottery win to Nakum Panang. Thai food stall owner receives shocking 50 million baht electricity bill. A repeat offender arrested for third temple donation box theft in Bangkok. 71-year-old Thai woman robbed and had her life taken in Chiang Mai. Thai police seized 5 million baht worth of vaping products. A man from Kuwait caused a severe accident in Pattaya. Jealous Thai man allegedly takes the life of his wife with a bomb. 
you know, the usual fuckery in Thailand. That place uh, draws a lot of people, a lot of tourists, and sometimes a few of them cause some serious problems down there. Let's have a look at our segment called Yesterday Today, where I read you guys some of the most popular comments. Buffalo Head said, they have something similar to cockfighting in the US. They are mugging and pulling weights, shoplifting with running and pushing elderly like bull running in Spain. Let Go says, no, I used to live in the province as a kid on a big farm. This always disturbed me. Charlie Simpleton says, mark my word, if cockfighting becomes illegal, there will be a national protest. Thanks for the constant video upload. Well, thank you for watching. And if you guys enjoyed this video, take a second out of your day. It really motivates me. Hit that subscribe button. It's completely free. Hit that thumbs up button and even consider sharing this video. That brings us to the end of this video. Feel free to share your comments about any of the stories I covered today. If you take the time to write it and if it's like appropriate, I'll go ahead and respond as usual. Thank you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.